In math fans today we're tackling a classic algebra conundrum, the square root of x squared. You might think it's just equal to x. But hold up, twist that often gets overlooked. Get ready to have your mind slightly unblown in a good way, hopefully. So, let's begin with a simple example. If I do this, where there's a 2 in the base, and I'm squaring up here, look at it carefully now. This would be the square root of 4. The square root of 4, the primary one, is just positive 2. If I do this, on the other hand, be very careful with in parentheses, minus 2 quantity squared. So again, parentheses. Then this means, again, 4, which comes out as positive 2. So let's emphasize some key points here. This is positive 2, and this is 2. This is different because this is negative 2, whereas this is positive 2. So pause the screen here if you have to, and like really focus on this a little bit. Look across from left to right, right to left, or whatever, and try to make sure you really we can relate the pieces in your own mind. Okay, so with that in place, take a look. What happens if you have variables present? I meant to put that over here. So if I have the root of x squared, you might say, well, this is always just equal to x. But clearly, as these examples show, it's not true. So one more time, look very carefully over here. This is 2, and it comes out as 2. That's like saying that whatever is here is the same thing that comes out of it right here. But when it's negative 2, positive 2 still comes out. So if this is x, whatever x happens to be, is it always equal to the same thing? It's not. Right? The second example right here shows us this is not the case. Because this is negative 2 versus positive 2. This is x. Does it always come out to just be x? No, it doesn't. So how can we think about it better? Well, look at it again from different perspectives. This is positive, comes out positive. This is negative, this comes out positive. What is something that is always positive or zero maybe? Absolute value. That is what is always zero or a positive number. So that means to make this work out the right way, when you take this out around the x, put absolute value bars like this. So the square root of x squared is absolute value of x. Now take a look at why is this different? Let's think about this. If I put 3 here and I do it this way, now this 3 here, look carefully, is again very, it's already positive, not very positive, it's just, this is 9, and the square root of that is what? 3. So in this case, again, this 3 agrees with this 3 right here. There's no difference between this one and this one here. So if we took the square root here of the input, like this, using absolute value bars, then we would still have 3. They're the same. One more time. Let me just grab this. If you look here, this is 3 and this is 3. Same values. Now let's make it different. Okay, so let's put here negative 3 quantity squared. One more time. This is 9. The root of 9, the primary one, is positive 3. This is 3. This is negative 3. They are no longer the same because we square in the middle here to get a positive 9. So in this case, to do this correctly with a single step, you would do this by doing this. You take the absolute value of negative 3. Right here, right here. And when you take the absolute value, it comes out to be positive 3, which is then going to match this positive 3 right there, you see? So that's why in general, when you do this, you take the uh, square root of x squared is equal to the absolute value of x, and not just x. So another way, another layer of understanding, another way to think about this is if you have the root of x squared, that is equal to x when x is greater than or equal to 0. That is true. On the other hand, the square root of x squared is equal to the negative of x when x is less than 0. That you can also do it this way. Why? Because this is the definition of absolute value. Now the last two steps here, they may seem a bit abstract. So at least kind of focus on these numerical examples here. Let me zoom out. You really should kind of maybe pause the video and read through them a few times. And as you read through them, really try to internalize what they're teaching you. And better yet, make up your own examples that illustrate this principle in action. When you make up your own math examples, you're taking ownership of the math. I think it's a much better way to learn. If you enjoy these kinds of videos, please be sure to subscribe and like. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in another one.